Okay, continuing a little bit further with our sequencer uh, editor in Blender. Today I'm going to show you that you can import your 3D uh, projects right into Blender. Uh, I don't usually, usually I would render out my uh, 3D project and then just import the video clip. And the reason for that is because the sequencer still has to render the 3D view. So you figure, depending on the effects you have in your 3D uh, project, uh, a, a frame can take anywhere from a second to a minute to render out and the sequencer is going to be trying to play that back at 30 frames a second so it, you're going to get a lot of lag but um, sometimes if it's just something simple it's easy to quickly add it in there and just render it out so let's quickly go to our 3d view uh, under modeling 2 here you got your default cube here I'm going to delete the default cube and I'm going to spacebar add text. I'm going to hit tab to edit that, backspace, and I'll just go my video. And I will go to the edit window here, which is F9, I believe, as well. Yep, F9. And click center to center the text. Uh, I'm going to hit tab to get out of edit mode and zero to go into my camera view so you can kind of see it from angle here. If I go extrude, it makes it kind of 3D. You can extrude it as much as you want. I'm just going to go 0.10 on the extrusion. Okay, so now I'm going to hit 7 on my number pad to go in top view, and then I'll hit Shift 0 to move my camera to there. So now this is our camera view. Now I'm going to go to our render window right here, which is F10, and I'm going to change our number of frames to, to 100, so it's just going to be just over 3 seconds. And also, I'm going to turn off. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do here is actually to make this simpler. I'm going to add a new scene, and I'm gonna go full copy. So now I have scene dot zero 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 or zero zero one. I'm gonna rename that title, just so I know what it is. I'm gonna hit shift down arrow to go to our first frame. It tells you down here in the corner what frame you're on. And I'm going to hit I. Oh, let's select the camera. So right select the camera, I. And I'm going to lock uh, the location rotation scale and putting in a keyframe. So I'm going to hit shift up to go to our last frame, which we've set to 100. And I'm going to grab the camera. And I'm going to hit Z for the Z axis. And I'm going to start moving my mouse up to about there. And I'm going to hit I to lock that keyframe. Now if we hit Alt A, it plays the animation. You can see the camera zooms in on my video. And it will loop until you hit space bar or escape or something. Let's go back to our sequencer right there. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to hit space bar like we normally would to add a video clip. But instead of adding a movie and audio, we'll import a scene. It's going to ask you which scene we're going to choose title. And so now you get this 100 uh, frame clip here. We'll put that right there. You notice we're just getting black up on the screen there. And that's because we have to go back to our modeling view. And we will go, we're still in title on the scene here. We will turn off do sequence because we don't want it to render the sequence. We want it to render the 3D view for title. We'll go back to our sequencer for here. And now you'll see when I click in different spots, the video uh, is rendered. It's very simple, so it renders it pretty fast, but you see it takes about a second. And you have to remember video plays back at 30 frames a second. So if I was to hit uh, play down here, turn off the audio for now, you'll see, oh, I do also want need to mention that uh, I accidentally changed the frames for our sequencer, we don't want that. We're going to move that back up to, we'll say, right here we're at 1618, so 1618 frames. Go to here in our timeline and I'll press play. You'll see it's playing really slow because it's rendering each frame. So we'll hit escape to get out of that, to stop that, or spacebar to stop that something to stop that. There, I hit pause there. <laughs> um, we want to delete this background from this image. So first thing we'll do, we'll go back to our model view 
and we'll go to uh, our shading f5 and we will go to our world which is the little globe here which I'm in and for the world view we're gonna put just to make it simple we'll grab the green and red put those down to zero and we'll put blue up to one so our background is now hundred percent blue uh, we'll go back to our sequencer I know this might be confusing because I'm jumping back and forth and you'll see now if I move it re-renders it and we got a solid blue background if we go to the website that I talked about in the last tutorial, which I'll also put a link to in uh, the description for this video, uh, for effects, we can see that we have right here chroma key RGB. And chroma key is basically your blue screen or green screen or whatever color you want to cut out of a project, of a background of a clip. Select the one for your operating system and save it. Go back into Blender. Select the clip and then the clip below it and we will hit spacebar plugin go to where you just download that plugin to I got chroma key RGB Linux right there and you'll see that its default set to blue we still have a blue border around the word but you do see me behind uh, in the background there we have the uh, effect selected we will go to our sequence buttons here, uh, which is right here, looks a little film strip. And we have, you can see red and green set to zero and blue set to 255, which is the max. But the reason we're seeing the blue border is because of the video compression when it's rendering, it, you're, it's, some of the colors are gonna get blended there. So we can just move our tolerance up a little bit. I'll move it about halfway, see how that looks. And our blue is gone. So now when we render that out, we'll have a nice little words coming in over our video. So that's how you can do chroma key, blue screen, in Blender, sequencer, using your 3D view. Now, it doesn't just have to be from your 3D view. You can import a still image or a video that has a solid blue background or a solid color background and use the same plugin to cut out the background. If you have a blue screen, you can dance around in front of it and then put a video of the Eiffel Tower behind you and you'll be dancing in front of the Eiffel Tower and so on. So that's chroma keying, uh, plugin and importing scenes into your sequencer. For more videos and tutorials like this, go to filmsbychris.com. The link is in the description as long as well with a link of the uh, plugins website.